And we're going to start right with their problem. And that's talking about what we're going to do while we're on offense here. Let me give you the stats on what they're on offense here. So the Bengals' defense is is just horrible. Let's be, Frankly, it's horrible all around. Yeah. Cincinnati is 31st in the NFL if points allowed, giving up 29 points per game. They have given up literally 103 points over the last three. That brings it for the average is 29. Well, the last three is 34.3 points a game they're giving up as. Think about that. 30 points, as I'm getting my emergency alerts here, by the way, saying get out of town, basically. <laughs> it's too late. I'm already here. <laughs> uh, First but, time. 30? Could you imagine giving up 34 points a game for three games, three weeks? Like, that's insanity, guys. Like, we would be, like, take, telling Shane Bowen when he's got to go. Yeah. Hey, that's what we'd be you. doing. And yeah. They yeah. have a good defensive quarter, though. I don't, I don't know why they can't get together, especially, um, yeah. It, it doesn't you know, make sense. I look at the it's roster, and I think the biggest issue is that they're, they've been signing guys the with big money deals for offense. And they haven't been keeping the defensive guy. Remember, like, was two years ago, they lost both their starting safeties, both very good safeties at that. You know, they've lost guys, even like some of the more mediocre guys, like Eli Apple, which you don't think of Eli Apple as a loss, but listen, if you got worse behind him, he is. You know, they've lost guys like crazy on this de- on this defense because they keep signing, you know, uh, Jamar Chase uh, needs a big contract. Burrow's got a big, huge, massive contract. You know, T. Higgins are giving a lot of money to the franchise tag this year. Like, they have a lot of money in those three players alone. You know, plus throw in things like, oh, they've got a huge contract that left tackle. So, you know, they're giving out money like you would not believe the offense. And they've just been kind of hoping the defense gets it together. It doesn't work yeah. that way, guys. You can't ignore one side of the ball. If the developed players on both sides, then sprinkle in free agents. That's why they're one of four. So, um, as I'm getting more more warnings, my phone just went off with a flash flood of warning. Like, oh, you think I might get flash flood of warnings during a hurricane? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Is there a wind advisory too? Perhaps <laughs> like, like what we expect. <laughs> uh, anyway. Teams are running the ball uh, on this defense uh, on a pretty high rate there. That's, that's one of the massive issues they're having here. So 50.76% of the plays against the Maroons. Okay, that is tremendously uh, high at that point there. So that is um, puts them as 27th in the NFL. Now, the way the rankings work the list, they run you the higher you are at that point. So that means that you know there's only four or five teams ahead of them that are people are running on more than this team. And they're getting up 151.4 rushing guards per game as 30th. And they're having 1.2 rushing touchdowns per game as 22nd. So they're basically allowing what the Vikings did last week almost every week, basically. That's basically what they're doing. Pretty much. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. that's not good. That is not good, guys. Um, their passing defense has been better, uh, but not great. They're giving up 67.74 completion percentage, 21st in the NFL, 214 passing yards, uh, which is 19. Now, keep in mind, only five teams have had less passes thrown against them in the NFL, and they're still ranked 19th in passing yards. So what does that tell you? The passing has been very effective. They're just not using it so much because the run game is that much better against them. So it's not that the pass defense is great. It's just the run defense is that much worse. Um, so they're also not getting to the quarterback, and they're sacking the QBs at just a 3.73% sack rate. That's 31st in the NFL. By the way, we're number one on that rate. Yeah. We're Score. number one. Sounds so, sounds so good to see something positive for once. Uh, so, guys, this is an offense. So this is a defense that our offense should have no problem with. And I hate to say it and put high expectations like this, but anything short of what we did last week, and I'm disappointed. Because this is one of the worst defenses in the entire league. That's 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 literally the way it is. And I'm not trying to be rude about it. I'm trying to just give you blunt, honest truth, guys. As Deb says, maybe they can hire Robert Sal as a defensive coordinator. Defensive consultant, sorry. Okay. Since Robert Sal was just fired this week from the Jets. But he's already said he's not going to go ed- into any position this, this year. He's just going to enjoy the rest of the offseason. So the rest of the season, and then go to the offseason and figure out what he's going to do from there. 
So no one's coming to save them. And again, I don't think coaching is the issue. I think it's purely a talent issue. You can't keep drafting like the first round pick they had this year was tackle. You can't keep drafting and signing offensive players. Ignore your defensive players. Let your good defensive players go and expect to be able to stop stop the football. That's not going to happen. You know, I mean, Hendrickson's probably the only like defensive star they really have left. He's getting up there in age now at this point. You know, B.J. Hill, the ex-giant, they still have him as well. But he's a good player, but he's not a great player. You know, think about it. We had him on our team, and I'm not saying that is a bad thing. Like he, I thought he was underutilized when he was a giant. But he's no Dexter Lawrence. He's no, you know, Chris Jones. He's not that kind of echelon. He's not even DeForest Buckner. Like, he's just, he's above average. They're missing stars on defense. And because of that, guys, the Giants should be able to take full advantage. The, guy, the Giants should be able to go ahead and have a game like we had against the Vikings. I expect Devin Singletary to have a very good game if he's back. We'll have to see on that. We'll give you guys the injury report tomorrow and that kind of stuff. But if he's back, I'm expecting a big game from him. And if he doesn't have a big game, and let's say hypothetically Tyrone Tracy has a good game, guess what? Those cries that Tracy to take his starting job are going to get louder and louder. He's got he's to prove that what he did against the, the Cowboys was a fluke and a one-time thing. Because that's why the, I think the cries are there, because he go, he went against a really bad front team and he did a damn thing with it. So now he has another one. If he's healthy, he has a chance to do something special here and shut people up. Because that's a great feeling if you're a guy that's somebody trying to take your job and you come back and just crush it. That's a great damn feeling to go ahead and just take it. Say, nope, I got this. This is my job. And honestly, it's best for the Giants. It's best for the Giants. Like I said, we used to talk about this on the last episode. I, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, on uh, we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about last episode. It's not good for the Giants to have Tyrone Tracy Jr. shoved into a starting lineup because if he fails at all, you're going to kill his confidence. You want Devin Singletary to be your starter, or at least a split between the two. So you give Tracy a chance to truly develop naturally without forcing him into a position when he's still learning running back position, guys. He's still learning. He's got great still. instincts, though. Yeah. he's Like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm counting on both those guys having a big game. I'm counting on Daniel Jones having a steady game. I just want to, I want to see a couple more bombs from him, too. I want to see a couple more Slayton bombs. Like, that, that's my challenge to Daniel Jones this week. Is shut, shut us up. And I mean, us, just me and Rob. I mean, all the fans, all the content creators, all the media personalities, because that's what got us so mad. The, for the like, everybody's like, "Oh, he played great weeks two through uh, uh, through five there," but he didn't because he can't. He couldn't throw the deep ball. And until you can throw the deep ball on a consistent basis when it's there, and it's been there, it's been the guys have been wide open. You're a game manager. He did that very well with Slayton on that one drive there. A couple bombs to him and really. Made it nice and simple. If he continues doing that, he's going to shut us all up. And I'll be glad to be shut up. Like I said at the get-go, we are here to roof of the kid. He's a great guy by all accounts. And he's a New York Giant. So, this is the week for us really to have a good offensive output there at that point. If you like that clip, then you will love the full episodes too. Find us on your favorite podcast app and look for us on all your favorite social media platforms. Thanks so much. Please, I'm, I'm begging you, please, please subscribe.